I never know what to do about some of my antique obsessions. Uh, I bird hunt and a woman in uh, Portland when I was doing the arts and lecture series asked the question, must you hunt or why do you hunt? And I said, maybe I'm less evolved than you are. <laughs> but tonight uh, I, I've decided to save myself. I'm only going to or mostly going to read poems that I've never read aloud before. Uh, on the way in here, on the stage when we were doing a sound check, it was amusing because uh, there is a sign that said, do not walk on the floor. <laughs> and I immediately, because of my Christian upbringing, thought of our Lord walking on water. <laughs> and then I thought of a poem I wrote uh, a couple of summers ago uh, uh, about all the signs that you see telling you not to do anything, essentially. I had a watch, that's what I'm looking for, so I know how long to read. I don't have a watch. Peter, bring me your watch. Anyway, this is a, this is a uh, poem written in Marquette, Michigan. Marquette, Michigan. The signs. All of the signs saying they're implicit or explicit no. Unattended children will be bayoneted. <laughs> Don't eat the sandy dog turds. <laughs> no throwing blue biscuits. Only back-to-back -back sexual congress is permitted. <laughs> the plop, plop, plop of joggers must be in unison. Sanitary napkins unavailable on Tuesdays. <laughs> All local water is over your head. There is no ground under your feet in this area. Keep off the pier unless you're androgynous. Do not spit in your house twice. Certain stars are not burning haunted houses. The dangerous Undertow will return you home. One bite of anything can kill. Uh, this morning, Jim, after my morning walk, I was coming back to the hotel and I saw, I looked up, I saw a beautiful raven perched in an oak tree in front of the Loretto Chapel facing your balcony. It seemed to be wanting to strike up a conversation with you. And I know that you have these conversations with creatures in various places, and I wonder what language do you speak when you talk to animals? Oh, you just squawk. I had a, <laughs> I have some ravens at that hard luck where that concha dog lived, and they would come uh, to visit, and I was upset because they were creatures of habit. They make their rounds, and uh, they were coming between 11 and 11.10 in the morning, you know? That was as bad as me. Uh, but then I, uh, they found me up another canyon and were very upset. They landed very close to me and gave me a bawling out. But I had seen the ravens at my cabin, the huge northern ravens with beards and everything. They had a raven funeral in the back uh, yard of, uh, it's not really a yard of my cabin, where one was expiring, and they stayed with uh, the dying raven for about three hours, trying to get him to go back to life. But he fell sort of softly down through this big pine tree over a period of an hour or so. And I actually heard the plop when it hit the ground. Then they stayed around about another hour and left. Remarkably, 
There's a new book by Candy Savage on corvidae intelligence. Even their brain structures is apparently different from other birds. Fascinating book. Her picture on the back cover is real pretty, too. <laughs> Charles Olson said this wonderful thing about you. I think it was uh, apropos of the publication of Locations, your second book, that you're one of the animals that you write from within the natural world, not about the natural world. Well, I think <laughs> that's a little bit by accident. It's just the way I uh, uh, grew up. And then when I lost, there are various stories about this, but the true story, if I can ever stop, that be. In fact, my mother told me two years before she died, she was a old Swede, you know, her parents were immigrants. This is a Swedish compliment. She said to me, you've made quite a living out of your fibs. <laughs> Charming, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, when I was blinded at seven, I sort of retreated into the natural world. And, you know, even Shakespeare said, we are nature too. And sometimes you're outside looking in, but then some rare times that we value most, you're inside looking out. And I don't know what exactly this is going on there, but you do feel intensely at home in a way that you don't in a building. Yeah.